Hi, my name is Alan Resnick, and I am so honored to be speaking at this year's Democ Conference. Honestly, this is a thrill of a lifetime. So if you don't know me, I'm just one of those cool, successful people that you see walking around. A little personal background about me. I'm a bit of a tech head. So what does that mean? It means my average day is spent surfing the web, checking my email, and clicking on links. That's kind of me in a nutshell. And you may not know it from looking at me, but I love to ride the bus. I always ride the bus, and when I'm on there, I, li I like to listen in on to people's personal, private conversations. And you hear, this is something I always hear on the bus. You always hear people say, what codex should I use? You ever, you ever hear people say that on the street or on the bus? What codex should I use? And sure enough, without fail, the bus driver will always respond, I don't know, hey, hey. This is how bus drivers talk. Hey, why don't you use the quick time codex? No! QuickTime is not a codec. QuickTime is not a codec. It's a container. Of course, everybody here knows that. But did you know that about 98% of the adult population are what I like to call big dumb idiots. And they ask stupid, stupid questions and they are severely undereducated about video compression. So what I'd like to do tonight is I'd like to kind of give a history lesson of, of video compression past, present, and future. So So why don't we jump into our time machine into the past? The year is 1888, and a man named Edward Mouvet just invented what would later be known as the movie camp. And a little background, the word movie is just a very quick and simple way of saying moving. So in a way, that word is kind of like the original codec. I just kind of came up with that. So anyways, it's 1888, and Edward is taking all these photos of horses running. He's kind of got a weird horse fetish. And he's taking these horse photos, and he's flipping through them. He's being like, oh, look, did I get any good shot? He's flipping through them, and he's kind of stunned. He's saying, Hey, it kind of looks like the horse is running. Is this horse, is this a horse running? He, he's, something goes off and he, and he says, this is cool. This is cool, this is really kind of a neat thing. So Edward Bouvet organizes an event. He says, hey everybody in the street, hello. Come into my room, I wanna show you my horse photos. And everyone gathers into the room and he starts showing these horse photos really, really fast, one after another. Horse photo, 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 horse photo. And people in the room freak out because up until this point, no one had ever seen a horse move before and they thought it was a real horse. And they didn't want to get kicked in the head by the horse hooves, so they start stampeding out of the the room and it causes a big problem. Anyways, long story short, after the movie premiere, this guy comes up to Edward Mouvet and he says, hey man, what's up? I'm a big fan of your work, you're so cool. I was wondering, could I borrow that? Can I borrow that horse movie? I wanna take it home to my girlfriend and show her the horse movie. She's a bit of a horse head, we do horse play in the bedroom. And anyways, it puts Edward in super weird, awkward position because if he wants to loan out the horse movie, he's gotta give this guy like 100,000 horse photos. It's too many horse photos. It's a big stack of horse photos. And what if he drops all the papers and then boom, the, the horse movie is gone. But wouldn't it be nice if he could compress the horse movie? What, so what, what? He's thinking, what if I only had to give this guy two horse photos? Horse photo number one and the last horse photo. And you say, this is where the horse started, this is where the horse ends up, and take a wild guess how we got there. And that, that is the birth of video compression. You just show them this little image and you say, it's a, you get it, it's a horse movie, you don't need to do all that, that work. So let's fast forward 
a hundred years. Let's get in the time machine again. Whee! We am in a time machine. We're going back in time now. We It is now 1988. Everyone is wearing big colorful pants. Their hair looks silly. The iron curtain has started to show some cracks of crumbling and falling in the only thing people want to talk about is something called Iran Contra. I'm not so sure what that was. And it is the year that the discrete cosine transform finally grew up, turning everyone's sine waves into cosine waves and paving the way for the very first lossy video codec. I am speaking, of course, of the famous H.261. Yes, the H.261. I-frame, P-frame, 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 I-frame. Horse photo, P-P-P, horse photo. Fast forward another, whoa! Another 32 years, it is now the year 2020. 2020, the world is in chaos. Everyone is mad all the time. There is a disease that's making people uh, hide in their homes. And we have advanced all the way to the H.2657, I want to say five, I think we're actually maybe on six. And we have B frames now, so that's cool. And you can compress anything. In the year 2020, you can compress literally anything. So when someone says, what kind of things can you compress? Just say anything, you can compress anything. You can compress a video, a video of your mom, a picture of your dad, a little, you could compress a song about uh, a big scary man. You the big man. compress a video of a duck wearing a hat or maybe like a bee that's friends with an, uh, uh, a turtle. And, and this is all on the internet. It's all happening online. You know this more than, I don't know, has anyone here ever been on, on the internet before? There is some crazy stuff online, you guys. I don't, I don't wanna get into anything too graphic right now, but I am, t I am not lying. You, if you think of something filth, something awful in your head and say, I wanna see that, you type it in to a web search and there you will find a compressed, a highly compressed video of anything and they show it all. They will show the whole sh shebang and, and you can do, do or not do whatever you want with that information. Anyways, in the year 2020, there are so many different codecs to choose from. And yes, this is a blessing and a bit of a curse because now you always hear people on the street saying, well, I don't know what codec to use. There's too many options. So I actually did something amazing. I had a burst of energy and I was doing my lasso tricks. And I said, Alan, get out the camera compress this lasso video, this amazing video, um, with a bunch of different codecs. So next time someone asks you, what codec should I use? You show them this video, and I think it will clear things up. So I hope that helped. Before I go, I would like to just kind of think about the future.
These are just guesses that I have of where the industry is going, where it might lead, and just some things that would be kind of cool. H.267 is a pretty safe bet. At some point, we're gonna hit, we're gonna see a number seven, or maybe even eight, nine. It, I mean, at some point, it's gotta end. It's getting stupid. Resolution, resolution. Everyone's always talking about 8K, so 12K. What resolu There will be no resolution soon. I think in the, in the next couple of years, you're never gonna hear the word resolution again, because you're just gonna be able to zoom in on any little thing. You're gonna say, hey, does that guy have a zit? You're gonna zoom in on it, and you can zoom in forever and ever and ever. You can basically get inside their, their head. And what if there was no frame rate? Wouldn't that be cool if there was no frame rate? You didn't even have to say it. Just Everything was just real. Literally, it would be real at this point. I think that could be kind of cool. Uh, uh. What if the codex could age with you? Like you, you have a video file of an episode of Friends that you watch in your 30s and you're like, hey, I relate to all the friends, they're like me. And then time moves on 20, 30 years later, you open up friends.avi mp4 and Joey is old and you're old and you're like, it, it, it time affected my video. I think that could be kind of neat. I think it would be interesting at some point if Codex could start compressing different parts of the visible spectrum, different light, light waves that you can't even see, but the computer sees it. And maybe, who knows, maybe they discover there's, you, there's, a go, there's ghosts that we didn't see because of the limitations of the brain aren't limited to, to the computer. And I think that's kind of a beautiful idea. Imagine a future, if you will, without file size. You're saying, hey, that doesn't make any sense. No file size? Yes, I'm saying in the future, every video file will literally be zero megabytes big, and you could fit an infinite amount on a little uh, micro SD card that you could eat, and you eat that, and you see a, mo you see a new Avatar movie. These are, free, these are all free suggestions. You can take these. Maybe you, you can just take these and work on these and profit from them. I just want to know that I've, I've influenced you in some way. What if, what if, what if, what if you could touch a, a video file? You could reach out, you could touch a video file. You touch it, you feel the video, and, 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 you ha and, you, and the video is like, ooh, that, whoa, that felt good. Or, or conversely, what if a video could reach out and touch you and you'd be like, what is this movie? I felt it on my head. Two words, smart codex. What does that mean? What kind of an idea? What if your video files and the compression software that codes and decodes them started to become conscious, smart video files that have ideas of their own, hopes and dreams. They, what if they become friends with other videos? So like, maybe you're watching a movie on Amazon Prime and it becomes friends with a comedy special on Netflix and they get together and they start um, unionizing and, and fighting for rights. They get, what if video compression got, got the right to vote and they started taking control of manufacturing and things in the physical world. I think that's kind of an interesting idea and a scary one too. So it's something to look forward to and it's something to look out for. So thank you all so much for listening to me. I wanna thank the organizers of the Demox conference for having me. This is truly, honestly, this has been the thrill of my lifetime. I can't think of anything. This, top, this tops my wedding. This tops the birth of my child. This was great. And even though it was a virtual conference, even though I didn't get to meet anybody in real life, I still feel like I made a lot of friends along the way that I will not soon be forgetting. So long, thanks for listening. If anyone has any money they would like to give me, I'm always looking for investments. I have so many amazing ideas and I'm always open to getting more capital. So just Venmo me or send me a check or yeah, we'll work something out. Well, I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go long here. Okay, so uh, ha have a great day and keep up the good work. <laughs>